Hi everyone, a very good afternoon. You're watching the newsroom on ET now. I'm Mubina Kapasi. Markets, uh, well, we're, we're down and in the low sub the 11,000 mark as well. Uh, so it's quite a weak day that we are sitting on at this juncture. But before we do anything else, let's uh, address some Q1 numbers. We have Webhub Global that has delivered its numbers and it's quite a robust quarter. The company has in fact delivered its record highest sales volume. Let's bring on board Vineet Ganeriwala, the group CFO of Webhub Global. Uh, thank you so much, Vineet, for joining us today on ET Now. So despite the COVID dis you know, related disrup disruptions, how did you ensure you know business continuity uh, in the last two quarters that you know is clearly visible in your results as well yeah first of all good afternoon to you and all your viewers and uh, thank you for having me here so uh, it's really heartening to see our strong performance in q1 uh, uh, we actually responded with agility and refused to be uh, overwhelmed by the covid crisis which we all were grappling with uh, we took a lot of efforts to ensure the continuity of operations. Uh, safety of our employees was the prime thing. So we did a lot of work. Uh, so we encouraged people to work from home, all those who could work from home. We created a borderless workforce except for people in warehouse uh, and studio who needed to be in office. The rest everyone, all, uh, including us, were working from home. Uh, we also enhanced a lot of safety measures. Uh, so in U.S. and U.K., we were allowed to operate since we fall into the e-retailer category and, uh, uh, and we are also supplying essential products. Uh, so with all this, uh, uh, we also created our remote TV production and hosting capabilities. So all this together, we managed to continue the business uh, in this COVID quarter and quite happy to see the performance and outcome of that. Okay, well, that's, um, you know, good to know and great to hear from you. Um, you know, given that most of your sourcing happens from India, Thailand, uh, did you see any impact over there? How did you manage the supply chain bit? So our regional sourcing uh, supply... Okay, I think, I think we've lost the, yeah, I think the line has got disconnected, but that's Web of Global for you. The stock price, despite the pandemic, is now at 1,300 rupees. Um, today, it's a bit somber in trade, just half a percent gone. But uh, yeah, just to run you through the numbers, because they've definitely been a strong set in a quarter that has been impacted by, you know, worldwide lockdowns. Revenues grew by 25%. The unique manufacturing and sourcing based supply chain helped Q1. And yeah, sales volume was at 3.2 million. Margins expanded 13.4%. And 82 crore of free cash flow is what the company managed to generate with ROCs expanding to 49%. Um, balance sheet as well looks pretty healthy because they have cash of 358 crore rupees on their books as on the 30th of June. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, roughly what web of global managed to do in q1 um okay we've managed to bring on board vineet uh, so yeah vineet continue with the point you were making on how you're managing supply chain uh, vineet you were talking about uh, managing supply chain how did you do that uh, you know as we grappled with lockdowns Yes, so, so uh, we have our regional supply chain like across 20 countries uh, and uh, manufacturing capabilities in India and China. So initially when China was shut, India stepped up in that period. And later on, when India was shut down because of COVID, China, Thailand, Bali and other, other countries uh, stepped up and took up the responsibility to ensure continuity of supplies. We actually widened all our product portfolio also in these categories uh, in, in this period. Uh, from fashion, jewelry, lifestyle, and accessories, we also included uh, a lot of uh, health, uh, health and home, and essential items which the customer needed at that point of time. So, uh, strong merchandising and supply sourcing uh, is our key strength, and we really leveraged on that in this uh, COVID pandemic period. Okay.
All right. Um, let's talk about meantime, um, you know, what helped you attain those record sales volumes, 3.2 million. Um, what essentially aided that, aided that? And, you know, talk to us about the processes set up for virtual buying and, you know, virtual sourcing. Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, like I mentioned, we have a very strong regional supply uh, capabilities, uh, which helped. Uh, we have a strong merchandising capabilities. Uh, wherein we have like the a uh, lot of merchandisers are working continuously to identify the product which the customer need at that point of time and uh, then ensure supply and sell that at a deep discounted price so uh, also we have been investing in uh, digital platforms uh, for quite some time now and have recently also started stepping it up further so as a result, we are investing in like uh, websites, uh, our own uh, digital web platforms, uh, mobile apps, social media platforms, and the like. Uh, as a result of which, uh, the web sales are continuously growing at a rate much faster than the overall revenue growth. For this quarter, uh, web revenue grew by about 47% year on year and uh, is continuously growing, uh, taking the growth forward. Besides this, in the last quarter particularly, a host of uh, other small, a uh, uh, lot of other initiatives uh, like uh, uh, product innovations, uh, uh, investing further in production and hosting capabilities. Uh, we have our own unique, uh, deep, uh, engaging content with unique storytelling, uh, which helped in uh, pulling the overall sales to this record number, which you are seeing. Okay. Will essentials continue to form, uh, you know, a large part of your pie? I mean, how do you see that change? And also, you know, um, traditional retail may take a while to come back or, or, you know, some parts of it may not come back at all, right? We've seen so many of them file for bankruptcies. Um, and there's this increased media consumption, consumption as well because people are largely staying indoors. So what sort of benefit do you foresee of all of this for WebHub Global going forward? So the current disruption is uh, certainly changing long-term consumer shift uh, towards home shopping. And uh, we rightly fall in that segment. Uh, we are in home TV shopping and uh, e-commerce. So we are definitely, uh, we should definitely get the benefit out of it. And we are seeing that traction. So in fact, in the short term, we expect uh, to, that our growth will continue to be elevated. And in the long and medium term, we are quite confident of achieving our guidance of 15 to 17 percent constant currency growth uh, which we gave earlier uh, in terms of essentials uh, so essentials is fast it's also expanding as a now as a health and home category uh, uh, it uh, in the covid period uh, we did uh, see uh, elevated uh, mask sanitizers and those kind of essential sales which over a period of time have now uh, come down uh, but uh, have been take, but the, that place has been taken up by other health, home, uh, lifestyle categories. So uh, as such, we are uh, our model is product agnostic. Uh, we can sell, we will sell any item which the customer wants at that point of time, as long as we get our uh, required 60% and more gross margins. And we have been able to maintain uh, our desired gross margin for quite num for quite many years now. Okay, that you have. Uh, but great, thank you so much, Vineet, for joining us today on ET Now and, you know, sharing with us your Q1 numbers.